My name's Peter Mitchell. I'm the General Manager of Regulation and Democracy Services for the Tri-City Council and responsible for consenting processes, in particular building consents. The flood management areas are generally located around the Styx, the Avon and the Heathcote rivers. Also there are some uh, parts of Redcliffs and Sumner. In the flood management areas there are approximately 7,000 homes. They're designed to meet a, a uh, what's referred to as one in 200 year fl uh, flood level, which is higher than the rest of the city because of their proximity to, uh, in particular, the rivers that I mentioned. But it's also important to remember that there can be other parts of Christchurch where the floor levels will have changed depending on what effect the earthquakes had. Parts of the city have gone up, parts of the city have gone down, and parts have stayed the same. And clearly uh, for the council it's important when granting building consents to be able to ascertain what are the floor levels for new houses in particular, because after each major aftershock it really needs to in effect uh, resurvey the city, the whole city, by typically having aircraft flying over the city bouncing radio beams off the um, ground and then having got that data it's then got to develop uh, models to apply it on the ground, literally. What it means for a homeowner is that if you wish to build a new house then you'll need to have a conversation with the council as to uh, the floor level. That's a normal discussion with a new house but in particular for the flood management areas the floor levels would be higher than in other parts of the city to uh, minimise risk from uh, tidal flooding or heavy rainfall event flooding. For new builds, for most uh, homeowners, it, it, the, the finished floor levels are not really something they think about when they come to build a house. It, it is a topic that is of interest to their designer uh, or architect and particularly to the builder and obviously to the council. And for most homeowners they would go to a, a, a building company and they would never uh, have to necessarily worry about this sort of issue because at the end of the day uh, the council will settle on a floor level and the builder will simply build to it. I think around the, um, uh, the council sets finished floor levels be to ensure that water does not enter houses if there is a high rainfall event. Uh, it has a buffer uh, to allow for water, uh, cars driving down the road as, as we all know clearly cause waves and of course it has to manage all of that sort of uh, effect as well. Certainly everyone has a, has a personal judgement on this thing but I think for most people it will be not anything dramatic from that point of view. It's not like you've suddenly got a two storey house next door to you and I know there's been a lot of concern that when these new houses are rebuilt, that's what's going to happen. I don't think that'll, that'll happen at all. Every property is different, and that's why when it comes to setting the floor levels um, as a starting point, it, it, you may have, there'll be issues the council will look at, there may be a public drain at the back of the property. The height of the road outside the property can all affect how the finished floor level is set. That's all, and that has always been the case. That's, that's well before earthquakes because councils have done that sort of work for decades. Uh, in terms of it being in Technical Category 3, it's then saying to the council and to the builder and the designer, you need to take special care about what type of foundation goes on in this area. You then have to look at a specific site. And at the end of the day, the council will need to uh, issue a building consent based upon that because the council accepts responsibility that the consensus issues uh, need to be robust for the future because the buildings will be here for 100, 200 years. If you have a rebuild, it will be built to the new levels obviously. If you have an existing house, uh, then at the end of the day there's no requirement for you to increase the level of the house. That, that is a, the houses can stay at the current level. Um, and I expect that insurance companies probably would not be paying for houses to be jacked up should the landowner simply be concerned, of, you know, 
these new levels have come out. And the Building Act is quite clear that even though standards have increased over the years, the council cannot go back to existing homeowners and say, oh, you now need to meet these new standards today, because that's not feasible. Uh, what the council's done is it's put on, uh, on the web uh, information which will be sp property specific, so you'll be able to go bring up your street address and then look at ground levels and finished floor levels for your particular property. Now, uh, they will be in a way that is um, probably to a lot of people won't be easy to understand. You'll have uh, just numbers like 11.5 for example and for most people what, what does that mean for me? The reality is it won't mean a lot. It'll mean uh, real information for builders and designers because those numbers have been derived from, a, from computer models. There, there is an element of tolerance in them. So when you come to the council, you're able to contact the council if you want a specific number. Uh, you, and you need that in two situations. One, when you're actually applying for a building consent, because the council needs to just say this is the number. Or secondly, there may be people looking to settle with their insurers before getting a building consent and they may wish to have a specific number. And we have a process whereby you can actually obtain that number. $2 billion has been spent in terms of uh, repairs for those. Uh, there's many kilometres of stormwater pipes, roading being done. There is different designs in terms of the piping because clearly uh, in terms of future proofing for, uh, for future earthquakes, the, the seismologists tell us that we're in a heightened seismic activity for a number of years, could be five to seven years, and clearly if there are future events then as far as possible, minimise the risk of pipes breaking again in the future. The council uh, puts information on the limb from the perspective of would a prospective purchaser be interested in knowing that information. That's the way that the courts have interpreted the council's need to approach that. So it's not from the homeowner's point of view, it's from the prospective purchaser's point of view. And clearly, uh, I think any purchaser would be interested in knowing whether the house, which category the house was in, and also if the, the house was damaged and what repairs were carried out. Now, there's a lot of repairs that can be carried out the council does not need a building consent for, the council doesn't know. Otherwise, if we have the technical category information, which is already on the web today, and then yes, you, we would um, provide a link to that website. I think uh, one of the other outcomes from the earthquake has been particularly in the technical category three uh, land, which of course, a lot of which is outside the flood management areas. Uh, there's been a, a change in the, probably in the type of house you can build. Um, I think people in Christchurch, a lot of houses, they like to have their concrete powered foundations, they like to have bricks, they like to have concrete tile roofs and the, uh, what the advice is coming through is that for parts of TC3 or uh, the, the land simply will not be able to going forward take the weight of those types of houses. That house typically weighs around 60 tonnes. Rebuild a lighter house, e.g. timber piled, timber floors, a cladding for the walls and some lighter material for the roof so that uh, if in another event occurs, then the house is in a much better position to uh, deal with that earthquake.